Good morning, everyone. My name is Yu Zhe Tang, and uh, uh, today it's my great pleasure to present uh, our work on SBC. Um, this is uh, understanding Ethereum memory pool DOS security via uh, symbolized the state for fuzzing. Joined work with my student Yi Bo Wan, uh, Wan Ningding, uh, Zhi Hua Yang, and my former student Kai Li. So we are from Syracuse University. To begin with, let me introduce the concept of uh, memory pool. Um, memory pool is a critical subsystem in um, blockchain, such as uh, Ethereum and, uh, and Bitcoin. Uh, its main job is to buffer uh, unconfirmed transactions before uh, block validation, so that uh, validators will be able to select those um, transactions from memory pool to build the next block. But if uh, the memory pool service is denied, um, there will be a couple of victims. Um, validators will not be happy because uh, uh, they will be left with uh, uh, empty memory pool and zero transactions to build uh, in the next block. Um, this means uh, their revenue will become zero. And uh, in the long run, they lose their incentive in participating uh, block validation that will shrink the blockchain network and we introduce a 51% uh, um, attack. On the other end, uh, Web3 users will not be happy because uh, their transactions will not be included in the blockchain on time or may not, it may not be included in the blockchain forever. Um, so this uh, um, has definitely negative uh, uh, impact on their applications uh, such as DeFi, which is uh, usually time sensitive. So in the existing literature, there are some research on constructing those uh, memory pool DOS attack. Um, one particular kind of a DOS attack is uh, asymmetric DOS, which means that uh, um, the attack cost is much lower than the uh, victim. Um, so there is a paper uh, published um, three years ago in CCS um, and DETER, and uh, there is uh, also a recent paper um, accepted to appear in Usenix Security uh, Memory Purge. And they are all um, asymmetric memory pool uh, DOS attack, uh, very practical, practical and uh, uh, also tested uh, quite successfully on Ethereum testnet. So on the screenshot here, it shows uh, one of the um, evaluation results um, from, I think, some of the test net. You can see between these two red dotted lines, um, that's the time period. That's the four blocks produced um, when the attack uh, was mounted. Okay, um, and you can see the um, gas utilization, which is the last, um, uh, last column. Um, shrink, uh, decrease to uh, almost zero percent. However, the limitation of a current uh, um, memory pool DOS attack research um, is the following. Um, so those attacks are manually discovered, which means that uh, if there is a new client um, or a um, uh, new feature introduced, into uh, exist existing uh, memory pool implementation, it requires um, manual effort um, to inspect those features and uh, um, to determine if uh, the memory pool is secure or, or if there is any uh, new DOS attack. Uh, in other words, it's really cumbersome um, to analyze uh, any uh, new code um, put into a memory pool software. So to tackle this problem, um, we propose to automate the discovery of memory pool DOS vulnerabilities. Fast-based software testing or fuzzing is a promising approach to discover vulnerabilities. So a natural design here is to uh, fast the memory pool imp implementation. Um, but memory pool fuzzing is distinct from existing blockchain fuzzers. Because uh, our target vulnerability is not based on crash, so existing crash-based uh, 
um, like a traditional father, uh, AFL and also um, uh, Loki uh, will be inefficient. Uh, there are some um, blockchain um, fuzzers that are designed to find the design flaws, uh, consensus design flaws. Uh, however, memory pool has an input space much larger than uh, consensus protocols. Uh, for instance, a memory pool is supposed to read or handle um, invalid transactions and the transactions of varying prices, uh, which uh, consensus protocol um, do not consider. Um, so this defines a much larger input space uh, than consensus. And the existing consensus fuzzers such as the TYR is not applicable here. Also, memory pool um, is uh, not a differential fuzzing problem. So uh, we propose in this work uh, MP fuzz. Uh, the first memory pool fuzzer um, uh, which is uh, uh, symbolized the stateful uh, father for finding denial of service vulnerabilities. Okay, so the big challenge here is the huge input space. Um, initially, uh, the input space is defined by the sequence of unlimited transactions, and uh, we reduce the search space um, to consider, uh, sorry, uh, reduce the search space by consider uh, memory pool states. Uh, instead of uh, exploring this, the space of uh, uh, transaction sequences, unlimited transaction sequences, uh, we are here to explore the memory pool state, each of a limited size. But still, um, we have a large search space, and this is the state explosion problem. Uh, so we propose further ideas, um, for instance, uh, uh, symbolize the transactions and the states um, so that uh, we explore symbolize the search space, which is smaller than the space of concrete transactions. So this is the overview of our workflow using MPFAS. Um, first, uh, we have to sort of configure our memory pool to a smaller size. So this is the this is smaller memory pool is what we call uh, memory pool under test or uh, MUT. And then uh, we run symbolize the stateful father against the MUT to discover short a small export. And uh, the third step is to extend the small export to the original memory pool. Among these three steps, the uh, first and the third steps are uh, manually done. And uh, uh, the second step is uh, fully automated in this work. So next I'm going to dig into the second step, how, um, what kind of algorithm uh, we designed and what kind of uh, uh, techniques we, we uh, embedded this, in, this algorithm to speed up uh, the processing. So our symbolized state for father is based, uh, maintains a, a essential data structure, um, a seed database. And it is an iterative algorithm and runs in multiple iterations. Uh, first, um, it uh, select a state from um, the state database, see the database, um, and the selection is based on energy. Okay, different seeds are associated with a different level of energy. The one with the lowest energy will be selected in priority. And then um, we generate a transaction um, by instantiating uh, symbols against the current selected uh, uh, state, ST. Uh, after that, uh, we send this transaction to MUT and observe the end state, ST prime. Uh, we emit the transaction sequence um, if uh, ST prime meets the bug oracle. Uh, otherwise, uh, we check uh, state feedback. If the feedback is positive, then we add ST prime um, to um, SDB. So this uh, complete uh, one iteration and if uh, the SDB is non-empty, it goes back to step A and repeat until SDB becomes uh, um, empty. Sorry. Um, so in this uh, workflow, um, we propose uh, new techniques uh, regarding uh, energy, symbol, bug oracle, and the state feedback. Uh, in the next uh, couple of slides, I'm going to um, briefly introduce the idea of those new techniques. So first, the bug oracle. 
our MP fuzz is designed to uh, find the specific kind of uh, um, design flaws, um, the memory pool and DOS vulnerabilities. Uh, here, let me use uh, an example um, to illustrate uh, how the um, bag oracle is designed. So uh, let me use uh, an example attack, deter attack. So this is the paper we um, presented uh, at SBC last year. Uh, so in this case, uh, we are looking at a toy example, um, basically a memory pool uh, receiving um, two, tra uh, storing two transactions initially, transaction uh, uh, one and two. Uh, they are both, uh, they are sent from two different uh, uh, senders, Addison and Bob, um, both with uh, nonce one and with the sum price. At this point, the memory pool is profitable um, because the three plus four is a positive value, positive uh, um, profit. And then uh, Malloy uh, adversary uh, sends two transactions, uh, takes three and four. Um, they are both future transactions in Ethereum jargon um, because their nouns are not uh, uh, consecutive, although they have a higher price. Um, like the memory pool implementation a couple of years ago, uh, we'll make uh, the following decision. They will admit transaction three, four, and evict transaction uh, one and two. So this is the end state. Um, in this end state, transaction three and four will become um, the main only trans two transactions in the memory pool. And the memory pool becomes uh, non-profitable. So um, if we look at this process, um, there are two things. Uh, first, uh, this attack or this transaction sequence uh, causes the full damage uh, to the victim um, because uh, the initial state, which is uh, takes uh, one and two, is has nothing in common with uh, the end state takes uh, three and four. Uh, so their intersection is uh, empty set. Uh, also, uh, the adversary is able to cause this damage without paying any ether. Um, in other words, uh, the att attack cost is uh, low. Um, so we measure the ratio between the profit of uh, the end, of end state uh, against the profit of the initial state. Uh, so you can see um, uh, it is zero. So we generalize the observation here um, to define the eviction uh, bug work. So next, let me talk about a symbolization. Uh, in order to reduce the search space, um, particularly um, transaction uh, space and also uh, memory pool state space, uh, our key idea is symbolization. We um, observe that uh, uh, there are a couple of symbols, uh, different uh, transaction uh, force under, for instance, uh, future transaction, uh, replacement transaction, child transaction, uh, overdraft, latent overdraft, a normal user, a normal transaction, sorry, um, parent transaction. Okay. Uh, transactions of the same symbol trigger uh, same memory pool behavior. Uh, therefore, um, it is uh, unnecessary to try multiple transactions or multiple uh, states uh, of the same uh, symbol. For instance, um, uh, to a memory pool, if it is a future transaction, it will always make the same decision, no matter uh, this future transaction is uh, sent from either Alice or Bob, or no matter what kind of uh, announced value is selected in this uh, future transaction. So in that sense, we can just uh, um, cover transaction future uh, future transactions sent from Alice uh, without uh, uh, considering um, future transactions sent from other users. So we select a uh, state based on energy, and uh, our energy is uh, defined as the following. Um, first, uh, um, if this is state is already covered as in B. Uh, second, um, if uh, there is any um, 
uh, cost associated, what we call um, optimistic cost associated with this transaction. Uh, so we use some concrete uh, heuristic numbers here. Um, so you can see a uh, future transaction has zero cost because uh, it will never be uh, included in the blockchain. Um, B9 transaction has uh, uh, three, um, um, but in this case, uh, most in most of the case, um, the transaction o OP cost is equal to the um, price, um, but uh, there's an exception for child transaction. Uh, is OP cost is smaller than its price or its own cost um, because uh, <clears throat> there's a lower OP cost and is designed to take into um, account um, that a few, uh, sorry, child transaction can be evicted uh, in the future. Um, so um, there is a chance that uh, although the current future child transaction has a high price, it may be uh, reduced at a low number. Also, um, we insert the new transaction uh, ST prime and to the SDB uh, based on feedback. Um, the feedback considers uh, state coverage and uh, um, how promising the state is in reaching uh, eventually the bug oracle. Uh, here is an example how MPFAS find a functional uh, vulnerability on uh, a memory pool of a three slot. So initially it has a uh, three stores of three uh, normal transactions. Uh, then uh, it tries uh, three different uh, um, new transactions, um, overdraft, child, and uh, parent. Um, so only parent transaction uh, will be able to um, uh, generate it. And uh, that will transition the memory pool state from uh, 3N to NNP. Um, basically, this parent transaction will be admitted. And then in the next iteration, we do the similar thing. We generate, we instantiate the symbols into uh, four transactions. And for each one, uh, we send it to the memory pool of state NNP and the observe is end state. In this case, um, uh, you can see the end state from P1 is um, identical to the end state uh, from transaction uh, P0. So um, uh, we only need, so we can sort of uh, uh, remove NMP um, from the tree, from the um, seed database, and only con consider one instance. Um, so the number associated with each uh, state is, is energy. So we are going to select uh, MPC as the next uh, state to FAS. Um, and uh, we iterate um, through the tree and uh, um, eventually you can see uh, we find a leaf node uh, whose state is uh, uh, FEE or future empty empty. Uh, so in this state, the memory pool is unprofitable because uh, the block uh, validator will not be able to find any transaction, valid transaction to include in the next block. And Upon this point, um, MPFAS will emit um, the, the input transaction and, uh, and that is uh, export. So we conduct the performance evaluation. Uh, basically, we uh, implement uh, four baselines, uh, stateless father, uh, stateful father, but uh, with a concrete state and uh, enhanced uh, state for father uh, with some heuristic uh, for energy. And the last, we also uh, implement uh, MP father without a state uh, promisingness. And in this figure, you can see um, uh, under two different settings, uh, six slot uh, and another memory pool of 16 slot. Uh, MP first is always uh, the best. Um, it um, comparing to the nearest baseline, it uh, uh, saves uh, the time to find a functional export by uh, at least a two order of magnitude. So the timeout here means that uh, in this case, um, it uh, it is exceeding uh, two hours, and in the third row is uh, exceeding uh, sixteen hours. 
using our further, uh, we are able to discover new attacks. Uh, for instance, for um, eviction attack, we are able to find uh, uh, trending based attacks. And those attacks are more healthy, uh, stealthy, um, because uh, they require to send the transaction first, valid in the memory pool, and then the adversary is able to sort of return uh, those valid the adversary transaction into invalid ones uh, that we that will uh, lower their attacker cost. Also, those valid transactions uh, will be propagated uh, throughout the network. Uh, we also find uh, another new um, attack pattern uh, that is a locking attack, where the memory pool will be occupied by transactions and the normal trans transactions will be declined. So, on this table, it lists uh, some example of uh, vulnerabilities that we discovered. Uh, we report all the bugs to the Ethereum bug bounty program, and uh, most of them get confirmed, some of them get fixed. So uh, here, me, let me use a very simple example to illustrate uh, what a turning-based uh, uh, attack means. So in this case, we still have a two-slot memory pool initially um, storing um, transactions from benign user Bob, um, TX1, TX2, uh, with the nonce one and two. And then the attack node will send, um, again, um, two transactions uh, uh, from the same adversary user, uh, Molloy. Molloy will send the transaction with the consecutive nonces in, at this, uh, this time. Um, so these two transactions will appear as a valid transaction. Let me pull, will admit it because they have a higher price uh, than uh, Bob's transaction. After Malloy's transaction evict uh, Bob's transaction and take control over the memory pool, uh, Malloy will send another transaction, uh, TX5. Uh, TX5 will replace TX3. Uh, here you can see um, after it replaced um, transaction three, uh, transaction four becomes an overdraft transaction. Um, why? Because uh, Malloy initially have a balance of five uh, after TX5 of nonce one spent all five ether from his account and the uh, descendant transaction TX4 um, spending one ether will become an uh, overdraft transaction. Okay. Uh, so at least uh, um, TX4 will, be, will not be profitable and uh, uh, the block validators will not be able to include the text for from um, into the next block. Uh, we evaluated the success of uh, the newly discovered attacks on testnet. Uh, here is an example. Again, uh, we are looking at a screenshot uh, with the timeline uh, goes uh, upwards, uh, like uh, this way. And uh, um, between these two red lines are uh, uh, the four blocks produced uh, during the attack. And you can see the um, basically the blue bar measures um, the gas utilization, how much gas used um, in, in the transactions in the block. And you can see after the attack, uh, the blue bar drops immediately to zero, okay, except for the uh, uh, for the third ones here. So in this project, uh, we receive uh, uh, support via Bounty uh, a a program and the academic grants uh, from Ethereum Foundation, um, also partially supported by NSF. Uh, our bug reports uh, are documented on this web page. Um, our software art artifact um, can is a uh, um, publicly shared on uh, the second link, and uh, uh, the artifact passes the evaluation uh, from uh, Usenix um, Security 2024 uh, Artifact Evaluation Committee. So we will post um, our source code and uh, all the necessary um, dependencies uh, to GitHub. So here is a short demo. Um, in this, this is really just a two second uh, uh, demonstration. Um, so we already run our um, client against uh, Ethereum 
um, implementation and uh, uh, it can automatically generate uh, this uh, uh, status search tree. Uh, with that, uh, thank you for your attention.